92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com, streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5. Soon to have audio and video on RTC Channel 4. Scott's in the studio. Scott, how are you? Good, sir. Thank haven't, you. Haven't seen you for a while. It's been a while. All right, you found your coffee cup back there. You're all set? Yes, sir. All right, excellent, excellent. And on this Monday morning time now for Doc Talk Radio from Woodlawn Hospital, Dr. Eric Seward is with us, MD, and of course, Rochester Obstetrics and Gynecology. Dr. Seward, good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hi. We were just kind of off the air talking about our subject, and it's becoming a rather prevalent thing, I think, as time goes on. Yeah, no, I, I would start by saying that um, this, this particular topic was a uh, requested topic from a listener uh, who I hope is listening right now. Right. <laughs> the, um, the, the topic is growing. I would say that uh, a bit regional, but um, if you look at my personal career, when I first started, one of the biggest problems that we faced was teen pregnancy. Um, I had 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds pregnant fairly routinely. Um, now, on an order of probably five to one, I have more 35 plus year olds that are pregnant than I do teen pregnancies. Um, not that there aren't still some teen pregnancies out there, but I think this is sort of a function of society uh, when, and, and this is in generally a good thing, uh, a lot of women are now seeking pregnancies later. They're having their first baby later. They're going to med school, to law school, to you name it. Uh, they're they're putting career first. They're getting their ducks in a row. Uh, they're fighting their way up the corporate ladder, so to speak. And and then they're starting to think about having babies. Uh, sometimes that's that that's happening when you're. 30 or 32 or 35 or, or older and uh and this is this is becoming more and more of a day-to-day -day thing in in my world and so i think it's it's definitely worth taking a look at on this program and maybe kind of getting some information out um, i'm not gonna make a, a ton of commentary on this it's kind of an interesting topic but um Basically, biology is sort of fixed. You know, it's a, it's you know, you, the, our fertility rates are highest, our success rates are highest when we're eighteen to twenty-five, twenty-eight, something like that, and that's that's fixed. That's not going to change much. Um, uh, socially speaking, um, I think most people would argue that um, we're more. In this world now, we're more mature and capable of taking care of children and providing and, and in a more secure environment, probably when we're closer to 30 or 35 or older. Um, and that that curve is just, it doesn't match very well. I remember one time in med school that uh, somebody brought in this curve and they literally had a kind of a, a curve of success rate, biological success rate, and then this curve of social success rate. Uh, and and they, they crossed over somewhere around age 23 or something. Really? And so the, the person that was that was proposing this sort of said, well, this is the optimal time to have a baby, which, you know, is just totally arbitrary and ridiculous, <laughs> and I'm sure changing all the time. Sure. Um, but we have used this term, advanced maternal age. It's a mean-sounding term. Um, anybody that's 35 or older that that's pregnant thinks this. They tell me all the time. Um, and I even have one patient who, who changed that subtly to call it geriatric pregnancy, um, which seems a little more, um, a little a little harsher, I it guess. It does. It certainly does. Um, and it's, it's sort of interesting that that, that term comes from Years ago, the risk for having a Down syndrome baby at age 35 was close to 1 in 300. It still is. Um, the risk for doing the, the definitive testing, the amniocentesis testing, to prove that that baby had Down syndrome was about 1 in 300. And so I, I guess the theory was these, these things crossed at a reasonably large round uh, increment of five number. <laughs> and so everybody decided that that was the advanced maternal age line. Um, it, it has relevance for a few different reasons, but the truth of the matter is at, at age 20, the risk for having a Down syndrome baby is something in the order of one in 
uh, 1500 or so at 28 the risk is about one in 800 at 35 one in 300 as we've said and at 48 it's one in 12 so i mean you can do that it's a slightly parabolic but more or less linear increased risk sure. um and that's just down syndrome you right. look at all what we call aneuploidies which would be any uh form of genetic uh, malfunction any trisomies or monosomies or um weird problems, breaks, uh, micro deletions, things like that in the genetic code that may create problems. And those things all get more common as people get older. And it's, it's a fairly straightforward uh, process with um, eggs. Uh, basically, as they get older, there are more of these problems. Um, and there's a finite number of eggs. And this usually tends to be the problem with advanced maternal age and and genetic aneuploidy problems. Uh, most women, when they start ovulating, have about 20,000, 25,000 functional eggs. Uh, they get wasted a little bit every cycle. There's about 15 or 20 that kind of go through the process, one or two develop into follicles. Um, there are some that just don't don't survive over time. Uh, the ones that are there when you're 35 or 40 have fewer of whatever those signal proteins are that 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 make that process happen it's a, a bit of a mystery we know that fsh and lh uh, receptors are part of that we know that it's in a competition within any given cycle for a, a dominant follicle but there's just more problems that can occur the same things happen with sperm but but men tend to make sperm through their whole life and uh, those problems tend to be slightly different they're not they're not missing an extra chromosome so much as their um, fragile areas within the genetics and they tend to happen a little bit later more common when you get over over 60 years old um, there are there are sometimes um, sperm count numbers that fall but when we talk about advanced paternal age uh, that's a, a an older phenomenon than advanced much and a different age. phenomenon too it is yeah. it is totally in in for the sake of of this discussion i'm going to kind of keep it on on the female half of things um, let me ask you this so is, is there any any evidence to indicate that the the older a woman might happen to be when she gets pregnant uh, uh multiple births twins that type of yeah, thing um there there are in fact and in fact all, almost all of the um risk issues go go up with just about every aspect okay. of pregnancy but that's 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 kind of an interesting one but that's true um and i think in just in general ovulation issues go up um meaning both multiple ovulation and and fewer ovulations um to the first big category though would, would be i would I would say these aneuploidy problems, so the risks of Down syndrome and other trisomies, they're really only only a handful of trisomies that ever make it past the first, really the first six weeks or seven weeks. Uh, the only one that ever survives with any kind of regularity would be Down syndrome. Um, sex chromosomes are slightly different. Uh, they they can survive. And in fact, one of the more interesting ones is a thing called Klinefelter syndrome, where a, a guy has extra X chromosome. Um, and those are, are kind of interesting because there are a lot of men walking around out in the world right now that have that that don't know it um and we're finding this it's right. kind of interesting we're finding this with some of our uh, newer genetic testing uh but for the most part um most of the aneuploidies most of the chromosomal issues are things that that don't survive out of the out of the beginning phases of pregnancy and so one of the other things that we run into is an increased miscarriage rate uh, the older a, a, a mom is the more likely that is to happen um, fertility is a big issue um, you see a fairly sharp drop in, in fertility rates after the age of 35 it doesn't mean that it can't happen but if you look at at infertility as sort of a, a general um, you know, 15% of the population, 10% of the population issue, that number starts to go up pretty, pretty dramatically after 35, 36 years old. And after 40, um, it becomes a huge problem. Um, so we run into a lot of people uh, in my practice are, are coming in having delayed child 
birth for whatever reason they had met Prince Charming or they were going to school and getting their doctorate and doing all sorts of other things, climbing the corporate ladder and ultimately they now are are trying to get pregnant having all kinds of troubles. Um, you know, from my point of view, if I've got a 23-year-old that comes in and they haven't gotten pregnant over a, a reasonable amount of time, uh, and we usually consider infertility to be a year of trying without any without any um, okay. cause for for fertility issues, uh, then I will sort of slowly, sequentially, step by step, work through that whole big long process. It might take a few years, um, but we've got a lot of time to deal with. When you're 35, I tend to I tend to throw the you know the first. Uh, wrench at the problem and if it doesn't work we get our our infertility guys involved right. over 40 I, I may not even bother with the first wrench i may just say look you know this is this is the, every month is a every month is a, a lost egg um you know we need to we need to take advantage and so infertility is a big part of that and then there are all of the issues that i mean and this is generally true we all remember being 18 or 19 uh, years old and how much how much healthier we, we felt. <laughs> I, I, I can attest to this. Uh, um, can't we all? And there's a certain point at which, uh, you know, just generally our bodies kind of lose elasticity and we, we start to face some of the health issues of, of aging. Now, 35 is not over the hill and neither is 40 or 45 for <laughs> that <you>. matter. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's certainly, uh, we, we see more thyroid issues, more autoimmune issues, more high blood pressure, more risk for diabetes, more obesity, more, you know, just about everything starts to climb um, in risk after the age of 30, more after the age of 35, more after the age of 40. So, you know, when we have a, a 40 year old pregnant patient, you know, you, you tend to, as a doctor, as you know, in my job, I tend to worry a lot more about things like um, sudden infant death or fetal death at the end of pregnancy. We're going to do more antepartum testing. We're going to have shorter fuse to test for diabetes, and we're going to be watching blood pressure a little careful, more carefully. And so there are issues for the mother as well yeah. as for the baby at that age. Yeah, and and all of those things affect pregnancy. So it's it's sort of the the as as we like to say the. Um, the the passenger and the and the driver you know it's it's all um, involved um there are some pretty fantastic testing now um i've i've mentioned this at least once in past programs but there's a thing called a free cell fetal dna test which is quickly it's still a screening uh test but it's a very good screening test and it's um quickly supplanting or surplanting, I guess, all of the things that we've done in the past. And it's starting to um, take over, I think, some of the more invasive testing. So a lot of the things that we used to have to wait for to find out or the, you know, we doing amniocentesis or, or CVS testing to try to find some of these genetic issues, we now can do a simple non-invasive blood test on mom. They can screen for uh, the the placental uh, fragments of placental DNA that matches um, fetal DNA. There are ways to marker this away from maternal uh, cells, and just fantastic, interesting. I mean, we're finding some some pretty interesting things with this, which is exactly how we've come across um, the whole uh, Kleinfelter issue. Uh, sometimes you you can test. Uh, paternal uh, DNA, DNA and find some of these things and maybe infertility patients. Sure. This is kind of interesting, um, the sorts of things. Um, Dr. Eric Seward is our guest, OBGYN at Woodlawn Hospital. Okay. Yep. Continue on. So I think, I think um, you know, that said, you know, this is definitely, and I, I said this before, but I think at the moment I have maybe two patients that are under the age of 18 uh, on the spectrum of what we would consider okay. young maternal age um, those the risks that go along with young maternal age are going to be more things that are social you know these are people that usually don't have all of their education and they're, they're a little sort of lower on the socioeconomic and maybe maturity end of the spectrum but they make nice babies um, on the other end of the spectrum at age uh, 35 or 40 we start running into these both fertility rates, uh, issues, and then once people are pregnant, there's just a, a, a little more to think about, a little more involvement in the prenatal care, the screening tests and whatnot. If the older mom has been on birth control of some kind, does it make any difference what kind 
Does it make any difference if it's on the pill or some other kind of uh, birth the, control method? The, the, that's a loaded question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will. I will start with. Um, it's a good question. I will start with with birth control pills and IUDs in general. Um, those are fairly quick out of the system things, and okay. so, and with birth control pills in particular, they tend not to. In fact, they tend to maintain and regulate cycles, and so. It's a little easier to figure out the timing if we are going to have a problem with ovulation. For instance, we usually can figure that out fairly quickly coming off of a pill, and it happens fairly quickly. Um, IUDs really don't alter the internal um, hormonal milieu, okay. so to speak, and so you take those those out, and generally people are ready to go. Some of the longer-term things like... Um, depo provera shots um they they sometimes take a year to wear okay. out of your system and so they can they can make a bigger difference plus just the nature of how they work uh, the next one on implants things like that just it, it, they they mess up cycles a lot of times they take away cycles completely and so we just don't know um where the the cycles may go once people come off of them this is probably a program in and of itself and talking about birth control because i remember reading last week about mm -hmm. the new pill for men that is supposedly being developed and coming out and that type of thing yeah i i um uh, my my feminist friends would argue that that that's way overdue, and and they would also argue that you know why is it that I can't watch a football game without seeing a uh, erectile dysfunction <laughs> ad or testosterone <laughs> ad, or where, whereas uh, the responsibility falls on on women generally for birth control, but that is a whole different topic. Okay. Okay. You you as we started this conversation, we kind of wrap it up today, but as we started this conversation, you used the term regional. In, in terms of how this is affecting people, and I assume you meant nationwide. Uh, can you define that a little further? Yeah, I think if you, and, and I'll give you my own personal experience having been in a few different places. When I was, at, say, in Marion, um, which was a little bit er more of an urban um, environment, we just we had a lot more of the young maternal age issue and a little bit less of the advanced maternal age issue. When I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, Everybody out there was advanced maternal age. I, I, the majority of my patients were <clears throat> were in their 30s or, or even Big city in Big city concepts, you think? I think it has more to do with the nature of the population okay. of the people. I think there, there have been incremental changes in time. I think in general there, that this is a problem of the modern age. Um, it, it used to be that we, I think, followed the biological rhythms a little more, and now we're maybe following the social rhythms. There have been a lot of programs in place to sort of stamp out teen pregnancy, and, and they've had their effect over time. Um, <clears throat> for whatever reason, um, Rochester, comparing it to Marion, maybe it's just a smaller, slightly more rural community, okay. but we have, um, I definitely have a, a more advanced maternal age uh, population in my personal practice. I can't speak for everybody else in town. It could be that um, the older, wiser patients are seeking me out. I like to think that, but <laughs> uh, it's, or, or it could be that just the fact that, that, that the risks that go along with that may seek out an, uh, an obstetric specialist um, more so. Okay. But, you know, with that in mind, it just seems that the trends have been have been sort of leaning more towards the advanced maternal age. But I think that is regional. I think if you're downtown Indianapolis or if you're working in a more urban setting, um, you probably see, still see more teen pregnancy. You're available at Woodlawn Hospital? All the time. Okay. <laughs> Later today. Yeah, just uh, what, uh, somebody wants to continue this discussion, maybe visit a little further? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm always happy to have okay. uh, people come in and you know, this, I'm, I guarantee you that one of the first three or four patients of my day will be an advanced maternal age uh, you know, pregnant patient. And, and I guess I would like to leave with this thought. It, it is not something for a woman that age to be afraid of, is it? No, and, and, and this goes directly out to the person that right. requested this, this topic, um, um, who I, I think is fearful of that. <laughs> that. Sure. Um, you know, once you get pregnant, and, and I, I'll, I'll leave you with a little anecdotal story. My okay. sister-in-law uh, got pregnant, and I want to say at the time she must have been about 23 or 24, and she had a, a screening test that came back um, showing that she had a risk factor of, of 1 in 200 for Down syndrome. 
and her risk at the time was one in a thousand and she's a phd she was in school at the time and she uh she called me up in a panic because she had four or five times the risk uh, based on this test. And I, I had to point out to her, not very successfully, I might add, that, <laughs> that she only had a half a percent risk of having that problem. That means 99 and a half out of 100 times she wouldn't. I, if I had those odds in the lottery, I would, I would play it. Um, and the truth of the matter is once a pregnancy is established... And once we've gone through this sort of the initial testing uh, and screening phase of things, once we've gotten kind of out of that first 11 or 12 or 13 weeks, the vast majority of those pregnancies are going to be normal. My youngest son was an advanced maternal age baby. He's a he's left-handed, which is a little weird, but he's um, we won't hold that and, and he's me. redhead, which is a little weird, but he's um, right. he's a good kid in general and. Um, most of these babies that are born and of course once they are born they've got supportive parents that are mature that are sure. going to you know approach parenting with a, a, a little bit different perspective maybe a little less energy but a little more uh, a little more um, i guess long vision as to as to where you're going with things you'll be back with us next month Every month. All right. Yeah. Any particular topic you've been thinking about? Well, I, you know, I'm I'm up for for requests. Okay, um, the birth control good. topic would be a good one. Good. Um, I I also had a request for to discuss um, sex libido issues, okay. which may be a little uh, a little uh, uh, racy for for the radio, but we might be able to do that. But not for the TV, right, Scott? Oh, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Eric no. Seward, OBGY at a Woodlawn Hospital, as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Sure. We appreciate what you do for the community. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.